Okay, um, I think the hip replacement itself did not cause, the, not likely to have caused the patient to have pneumonia. But what are the risk factors for pneumonia in this patient? From what I can see, uh, one, that she has diabetes, 50 years. So diabetes weakened immune system and would make the patient more, uh, more at risk for getting pneumonia. Second reason is that she has been lying in bed all day long. So when the patient is lying down all the time and not moving around, then uh, we say that the, the phlegm and the secretions tend to accumulate in the lungs and that could result in pneumonia as well. So it's important for patients after hip replacement surgery to actually start walking early and do exercises daily. They should also do breathing exercises with a therapist if they, if they have access to a therapist. But at the minimum, they should be walking around as much as they can uh, after surgery. And that will help to reduce the risk of pneumonia as well as other infections like urinary tract infections and skin problems like pressure ulcers. So mobilization and walking after surgery is very important. Okay, so glucosamine and chondroitin um, are supposed to be supplements for the joints. So they don't work so much on the bones, but more on the cartilage. So um, in arthritis, there's a bit of controversy about glucosamine and chondroitin. There have been many, many big studies uh, done on both glucosamine and chondroitin. Unfortunately, there are, not, there are no big studies that seem to show that chondroitin consistently works in uh, reducing pain in arthritis. There are some studies that show that glucosamine can reduce some pain in arthritis, and other studies show that glucosamine has no effect. So there is a bit of conflicting data, and that's why uh, my, rec my recommendation was that um, you can try taking glucosamine for one to two months and see whether it works for you. If you find that you feel better, feel free to carry on. But if there's no benefit after one to two months, then perhaps you should stop. The sign of osteoarthritis. So um, I think we briefly covered this during the talk. Uh, most of the time, patients will feel pain in the knee. Uh, this is the most common symptom. And the pain often starts on the inner side of the knee 80 to 90% of the time. Other signs of osteoarthritis will be swelling in the knee, especially when you exercise too much or when you walk too far. Um, you can also get some stiffness in the knee, um, especially patients always say that they feel that the knee is tight after they sit for too long and they haven't moved it or when they wake up in the morning. Because our technique and is much better nowadays and technology has advanced a lot, partial knee replacement surgery lasts just as well as total knee replacement surgery um, if done by an experienced surgeon. Um, but to answer the question, uh, if it does need to be changed, then we have to see the reason why it needs to be changed. So sometimes if it's just a minor problem, like one part of the implant got worn out, we can always change that part of the implant that got worn out. But if there's a bigger problem with the knee, then we sometimes have to change it to a total knee replacement. So to answer the question, yes, um, we, we can change the partial knee replacement. And a lot of the times we do change it to a total knee replacement, but depending on what the actual problem is, um, you can sometimes just keep the partial knee replacement and just um, change the parts that are problematic. So to, to get the best assessment, uh, you should see uh, your orthopedic surgeon, preferably someone who does a lot of partial knee replacements, and he can help you to diagnose what the problem with the implant is and what's the best way for dealing with it. video ini jangan lupa subscribe channel Tekom TV share video ini jika kamu mendapatkan manfaat darinya Terima kasih